morning, everyone. Can everyone hear me? Um, I am uh, Mike Hendrick. I'm the building principal at Barberton Middle School. Um, with me, passing out some papers, is one of our counselors, uh, Deanna Stein. We have, um, just to give you a little bit of background about our building, uh, we have between 11 and 1,200 students um, in grades 5 through 8. Uh, we have myself as the building principal. We have three assistant principals. We have three counselors, including um, Ms. Stein. I'll uh, just give you a little background about our building. But what we're going to talk to you about is, um, like Heidi said, what, what we've done as far as um, our determining our need for SEL programming in the middle school and kind of what our process was for planning into a building-wide implementation for that and then talking about some of the resources and program uh, the curriculum that we're using this year. So first thing, we had a conversation uh, really with our entire building during last year just about what, what is our need for social and emotional learning uh, programming, what we want that to look like, what supports do our students need. So some of the things that we felt that lended itself in needing social emotional support in our building is we had students that needed support in some of these big areas like handling their emotions, peer conflicts, um, setting and meeting goals, making good decisions. Uh, relationships with other students, um, not having that parental uh, and family consistent support um, where the students aren't getting that outside of school. We do we need to address that within the school. Uh, approximately 75% of our students are economically disadvantaged. Uh, that lends itself to uh, a whole variety of challenges and concerns that we tackle within the building. Um, it's also, it was um, definitely a district wide focus. Um, that we kind of address social emotional learning and what we're going to do with each building. Um, and also the state of Ohio also has set up the social emotional learning standards. So we knew we needed to address this. Um, so that's kind of some background as far as um, just determining the need for it. What we did is we took all of last year, uh, we were very intentional as far as involving as much staff as possible to get feedback into what this would look like for our building, for Barbara and Middle School, um, and for our students and our staff. So we formed a committee uh, that was made up of counselors, teachers throughout the building, um, and we talked about just what, what's this gonna look like for us? Um, how are we gonna do it? Um, what, is, what is the need? What curriculum are we gonna use? What's this gonna look like within our day? Um, this was probably the most important thing that we did, uh, is we really took the whole year um, to really determine what path this would take for us. So we reviewed several different uh, curriculums, programs, um, tossed around different ideas for schedules, and was able to get a really good handle on it coming into this year. So some of the things that we reviewed, I'll uh, just give you a little bit of background. Um, we looked at having morning meetings, which Sheila can probably actually talk about. Um, our elementary school is to use a morning meeting model uh, where the, the classrooms meet with the teacher at small groups and they have discussions related around social emotional learning topics. Um, for us, we weren't sure how consistent that would be. We're about twice the size of our elementary. So it would be a lot more difficult, I think, to, to manage that. We also looked at um, a program called Strong Start or Strong Kit. Um, it is a curriculum. We have the book. If you want to take a look at it later on here, um, they do publish books there. Um, you can take a look at that. Um, that's used by our preschool and by our high school. Um, our biggest, uh, I guess, problem with that is that it's basically a textbook and we would be handing that to our teachers and saying, okay, here's, here's this book, go teach the social emotional learning class. Uh, it wasn't very user friendly. Um, we ended up looking at a program called Second Step, which there's some information about it in the packets that Ms. Time has passed out to you. Um, but we'll kind of show you some of the sample lessons and the overview of, of the website. Here shortly, but it was very extensive as far as resources, materials, lessons, uh, very interactive, very engaging, um, minimal planning for our teachers, uh, which was something that was definitely a huge pro for us introducing this to our entire staff. So to kind of show you uh, the website here, so this program again, um, it's called Second Step. It's by the Council for Children. And let's 
So we definitely wanted to highlight um, this resource with you because we know in, in the secondary world, middle school, going into high school, it's hard to find uh, really good, really engaging social emotional learning resources. Um, so I'd encourage all of you to, to take a look at this. To give you an overview, here's kind of what's included in the program. Um, as it says there, they have um, you know, fully loaded lessons for each grade level uh, based on four different pillars of social emotional learning. So each grade level contains about 28 lessons um, and they all focus on these four pillars. There's a unit on mindset goals, a unit on values of friendship, a unit on thoughts, emotions, and decisions, and a unit on serious peer conflicts. Um, that's grade appropriate for grades six, seven, and eight is the way the program is laid out. Each lesson takes about 25 minutes to a half hour. And one thing that our teachers and our students have seemed to like about so far is it's very much, um, it's, you can do the program completely paperless uh, where you don't have to print off any materials. Uh, there are some supplementary materials if you want to use in the classroom. But basically, in the classroom teacher, it's just projected onto uh, on your screen like a PowerPoint, essentially. And then it leads the students through the lesson uh, right there on the presentation. To give you an idea of what it covers each grade level, I think this is in the little handout uh, that Deanna had passed out. But this is just a quick snapshot of the scope and sequence, which outlines in each grade level um, by unit what social emotional learning topic is addressed in each grade level and within each unit. Another great part of this program is, you know, we were going to talk about our schedule in a minute and how I put this into our, into our day. Uh, but we're doing it once a week and we'll talk more about that. There's the ability with this program and the advisory activities where you could have a daily advisory program and there's enough supplementary materials in the advisory program um, to have a full program each day where you can address a lot of these things. You can even, under the advisory program, it even kind of builds out models for if you had a five-day advisory schedule, four-day, three-day, it gives you recommended um, outlines of how you would set that up. Another thing that's really nice about this program is their professional development uh, resources. Um, we use this extensively with our staff. And we'll talk about how we rolled that out with our staff. But they have uh, fantastic training videos and overviews for the staff in all of the units for professional development. There's also, as an administrator, there is a principal toolkit, uh, which myself as the administrator, I can go in. It's kind of a dashboard of all of our teachers, and it shows what lessons have been completed when um, so we kind of keep an eye on that for monitoring it's also great for data collection there's also an embedded um, this website parent team connect has a extensive amount of videos um, all about different uh, parental concerns so this is something that we're starting to um, encourage our teachers to share out with parents um, you can search by topics if you're a parent um, common struggles that parents might have with middle school students. So that's a great resource. And we wanted to show you, just so you kind of see what a typical lesson looks like. They all follow mostly the same pattern. This one is a sample eighth grade lesson. Within each lesson, you can click on objectives over here, and it'll tell you what the objective is. This one's all about setting goals. And each lesson kind of follows the same uh, kind of template. There's a warm up, there's a video, there's a discussion piece, kind of a come back, share out, maybe another video, and then a wrap up activity, typically. So just to give you an idea of where the video looks like, is the sound working on this? How can you turn a wish into a smart goal? 
when you wish for something in the future that you want to achieve, you know what you're to a setting, basically hard. Somewhere you'd like to be. You might want this goal very badly, but it will remain a wish or a dream until you come up with a strategy to get there. Today's strategy is to turn your wish into a smart goal. When you design a goal to be smart, it's specific, measurable, action-oriented, realistic, and timely. By creating a smart goal, you put your dream on the fast track. Let's take a closer look. A smart goal needs to be specific. You will need to clearly describe Oh, smart goals are always measurable. So we won't go through the whole video, but what's also really nice about this is that one is obviously more just uh, kind of a general video. Most of the videos that are within a program have uh, real life middle school age students um, offering their perspective feedback. The students seem to really enjoy that part, hearing what other students have to say about things that they're going through in middle school, some of the struggles that they're facing. Um, so it's a really good way to engage students. There's typically a discussion piece, an activity in each lesson, um, and then, like I said, a wrap-up within each one. So each lesson is set up kind of the same way, um, but very extensive as far as the resources um, and materials that they have. As far as how, how we rolled this out to our staff, uh, we talked about the professional development resources. We knew that we needed to front load our staff for this. Uh, we knew we wanted this to be Building wide, we wanted all of our staff to be involved in it. We wanted it to be a consistent uh, thing that our students were doing within the building. So we front loaded our staff with PD last year. Uh, we have monthly extended, or not extended, delayed start days. Um, I know a lot of schools do that. So during, we call ours magic time, um, so with magic start, <laughs> magical environment. In. But we, we had our students in small groups, which worked out better. We were able to run them through the professional development tutorials and videos through the program that really are good as far as showing the teachers, here's the materials within the website, here's how you as a teacher set things up, what you need to do, um, and runs them through all of the different units and what you need as a teacher and all the different resources. So we did that with our staff last year, our whole staff. We also did a free trial of the program last year to allow teachers to explore, experiment, get used to the website and the program. And then this year, when we came back, uh, we had everyone cycle through sessions, um, again, going over the general PD for the program, and then giving them time again to explore within their teams and within their classrooms individually, so they felt good about it going into the year. I'm not used to this kind of mic. I'm used to that from karaoke. But I'll try <laughs> so how do we put it into our schedule? We had three non-negotiables. We had to have every teacher involved and consistent. It's sacred time. Nobody, it's, it's built into our schedule. It permeates our culture and make it part of what we do. So the committee, I remember with one of the PDs, we talked to the committee, obviously, about times and what would be best, but we also talked to the teachers and the PD, and a lot of teachers wanted, thought that Friday afternoons right before they left would be the best time for this, and they actually came up with some pretty good reasons. They're getting them prepared for the weekend and, you know, remembering some good power skills, soft skills, but Ultimately, we wanted to give it the, the importance that it deserves, so we start out the week with it. And scheduling it, unfortunately, we couldn't have the small groups that we wanted because we don't have the space. We have about 1,150 kids in our building and not enough rooms for all the staff to have a group. So we did use every room we could. Specials teachers are involved. We also had to be aware of contract issues because there are some teachers who can't go over 150 or 80 kids and they're already at their max. So they had to have kids uh, in their small group that they already see. But two-man teams, 
could have a group of kids that they don't already see, which was an important factor. A lot of teachers wanted to see kids that they don't have to grade. And it really does make a difference in that safe environment when you're not worried about the grade as much, you can, you can be very open. Um, yep. And then you have a copy of the bell schedule, a copy of our normal bell schedule, and then what it looks like on Mondays only in your packet as well. And to hop in on the schedule part, because I know that's um, one of the biggest obstacles to doing something like this. Uh, we made it a commitment that we wanted to do one day a week. We're good a lot. I think, I think we allow exactly 32 minutes, uh, but roughly a half hour um, to social emotional learning, building wide, where that first period of the day, Monday morning, the whole building is doing it. So um, we had to work with our cafeteria staff. Uh, we adjusted when our lunches are on that day. Everything gets bumped back a little bit on that day. So there was a lot of communication, collaboration with a lot of different um, pieces and parts within the building to make that work. Um, but making the schedule uh, fit this was probably the most important thing to set it up for success. So like Deanna said, there is a hard copy there so you can kind of see our normal uh, bell schedule. We have nine 42 minute periods. Um, on SEL days, it ends up being, um, the SEL time is 32 minutes. Every other period then, all the teachers still see all of their students. They don't miss anybody. They still have all nine periods. Um, I think it's up to 38 minutes um, each period on those days. So it's slightly shorter, but everybody sees everybody, which kind of borrowed some time from all the different periods. So I know that's a big um, challenge in scheduling something like this. And one thing I wanted to add real quick as a counselor, so there was a little bit of chatter among the teachers. Well, why isn't why don't the counselors teach this in social emotional learning? And there's just at and, and I understand that, but there's no way that that three counselors can teach eleven hundred and fifty kids all of the the curriculum and social emotional learning that they need. So all the staff though do all of them did see the importance of it. I don't remember any pushback with someone saying it wasn't important. So the first the first couple Mondays, we just made sure everything logistically worked out. We did icebreakers. They worked on the PBIS initiatives to their matrix just to get everybody going. And, and really, I loved to walk around and see the small groups created, that they were sitting in circles and a lot of engagement and sharing. Uh, when they started the videos, I've noticed that it, it's not quite the circle, small group feeling, but I really do think that it will go back to that once they get used to the videos and responding and maybe different topics too. This is more the mindset and setting goals is more individualistic. When they get into the peer conflict, et cetera, portions of the curriculum, I think it might go to more sharing. There too. <laughs> so we've gotten awesome feedback from teachers. It really is positive. And kids too. I have not heard any kids complaining about it or they, they look forward to it. I've gone in and, and taught a couple times with a teacher and I loved it. We we had it was just great. I I feel a very positive vibe from it. And it also works the other way. I had a classroom teacher come up to me and say, I want to have kids that I don't see every day. And I explained the union issue with the numbers, but I have our ED teachers, they, any resource room teachers can also have groups of kids that they don't see. And so we kind of swap those kids out and they really appreciate that time with kids that they don't get to know because they get, they're just with their 12 kids every day. So. And we're going to do a survey for teachers and students to really get more into feedback that maybe they don't want to share verbally. So we'll be able to tweak it and get ideas. So do we have any questions? Yeah. So when you guys rolled all this out, um, since you said they're a little bit older, um, did you guys actually have the time to take you to sit down talking about what these goals are going to be? This is PBIS, this is what we're 
there's never a meeting. Yeah, there was not a formal uh, meeting like that, but all of the all of the teachers when we had that first couple of sessions, um, they were able to kind of intro the purpose of the class, let the students know this is what this time, what some skills we're going to be learning about, um, and kind of set the stage for the whole year with, with each of their individual groups. Do you have to pay for something? Yes, good question. <laughs> <laughs> yes, no, we meant to mention that. It, it was a, a what we thought was a very reasonable cost for everything that you got. Uh, a one-year building-wide license was approximately uh, $2,500. Um, and that's, again, that's for the whole building. All of our teachers are on it. Um, there are options to do a three-year and a five-year license. and It makes it a little cheaper each year. We're using, um, we paid for this year's license with a portion of a grant received for safety and security. We tied social emotional learning into that. Um, we're also, we're, as I'm sure all of you, we're going to be receiving more money for the student wellness and success grants coming out. Um, so we're anticipating earmarking some of that money to pay for this as well. So there seem to be a lot of resources to, to pay for it. But it does seem to be very reasonable because even with even with those hard textbooks, like that Start Strong book there, um, by the time we would have had to have bought hard copies of all of those for all of our teachers, it was more expensive than what we paid for this. So 